نحمده نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وصحبه وبارك على الحماه الذين القويم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي اسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام الى المسجد الاقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنوريه من اياتنا ان هو السميع البصير وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم كذلك نور يا ابراهيم ملك كوت السماوات والارض ليكون من الموقنين صدق الله وصدق رسوله الكريم ونحن ذلك من الشاهدين وبعد ان الحمد ان الحمد لله تعالى all praise and all glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being here this afternoon in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing one of the best of all the acts of ibadah the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the remembrance of Allah And how do we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we do the words of Allah, the ayats of Allah, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance, the ayats, the verses that tells us about Allah's greatness, His works and function of the creation of this heaven and the earth. When we look at the life of the Nabi and the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, indeed, we are involved in the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It tells us clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has created all of mankind with a function and purpose. And the existence that we are here for and its purpose is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing all of this for mankind has also indicated to us in sending prophets after prophet to the world. And amongst them sending the seal of the Anbiya, the seal of the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And amongst the Anbiya and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Many of the prophets of Allah they were given miracles such miracles that they use as a means to prove to their people not their word but that the people wanted to see proof that Allah existed that Allah was the cause and the purpose behind everything so they wanted proof and every nation that was existing and their prophets were with them they would ask their prophets bring a proof show us show us something so that we would recognize that this is the power of Allah even when Musa alayhi salam when he was at the time with the people of Bani Israel and he showed them the power of the staff and what it did they still wanted to see more and they always wanted to see more they wanted more proof and proof how much proof they wanted to recognize Allah and still with all these proof they became the nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed because all the proofs that they got even of the miracles they never accepted it and abided by it and obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it was not even enough so proof upon proof was not even sufficient for them Ibrahim alayhi salam his, his own people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him show them when they wanted to put him into the fire and he came out of the fire still that was in, was not enough it was not enough and every other occasion of ibrahim alayhi salam this happened and even to ibrahim himself he wanted to know how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could cause life and then bring life and what allah can cause that how is this possible how allah can do all of these things and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran the incident about the miracle of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he trained the birds and the birds came running towards him and then they were slaughtered and he put their pieces together in different parts of the mountain and when he called them they came running to Ibrahim why so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that conviction of iman liyatmainna that he may become satisfied in his iman and satisfaction that there is some proof that Allah is worthy of these these actions that Allah is indeed powerful that life and death is in the hands of Allah he was confirmed upon this but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him more than that 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the kadhalika nur ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed Ibrahim alayhi salam malakutu samawati wal ard the dominion of the heavens and the earth how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in controlling all of this subhanallah he showed him all of this how great is Allah in controlling every single thing in the heavens and the earth today we ourselves not even ourselves as Muslims, but the creation of other insan, those who don't believe in Allah, yet they have with science and technology, they can prove so much things about the science of this world, about the greatness of this world, and how it functions way better than the people of the past. Way better than the people of the past, we would understand the function and the way it operates. With all of this, all of this proof, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah to Bani Israel, Surah number 17 of the Holy Quran, the incident of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the miracles that was given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what was the difference between the past nations and our nation? Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did miracles indeed and blessed our Prophet with miracles. But these miracles was not to prove and the people never asked him to prove that this is Allah and show us Allah. But they were a sign of distinction that he is the messenger of Allah above men. It was a sign of distinction. Not that they did not know that there was a Allah but a distinction that he was the messenger of Allah. Subhanallah. And that distinction was sufficient for them. And out of this, the difference between us and many other nations is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of us not making and seeking proof of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not want proof of our iman and our amals as opposed to any other nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demand that He wants to see directly what we can do, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we rely upon Him. This is the level and trust that this ummah was blessed with. What is the connection between this and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and having this ayat mentioned in Surah Bani Israel? The very first verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in this surah, Subhanallah the Asarabi Abdihi Laila min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the first ayat here in Surah Bani Israel saying, Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah took his servant, Alladhi, the one who asra bi abdihi, took his servant by a journey. Laylan, by night. By night. From Masjid al Haram ila Masjid al Aqsa. Allah Himself declares the journey. Allah places clearly without any distinction and any clarification. He is saying it is a journey in reality. But Allah didn't just say it like that. He started this verse with ta'kid and emphasis. Subhanalladhi. Glory be to Allah. None could have done that like that in that time that Allah the way He did it. In other words, today we could take a plane from the haram and reach in Jerusalem in no time. We could do that in no time, we could probably start with Fajr, reach before Zohar, stay for Zohar, go to our next place and pray, and then reach back where? In the Haram, in no time. But a plane. Because we understand that that is what? Easy for us to do today. Without a doubt, that is without any stress whatsoever. Allah is saying at that time, no one physically capable could do that. They had no means to do that. So Allah is saying, Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. That glory be to Allah. Because He indeed had that power that no one had at that time to even do that. But we could conceptualize it today, but in the past, no one would think to themselves that this is only what? Really what? Out of the way. Really in someone's imagination. Something far-fetched. But for us it is not. For us is it not. And for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and Allah, he's saying with ta'akid and emphasis, this is without a doubt, this is nothing for me to do. He is Allah. He is the Rabb, the creator of the universe. The things that we enjoy, which are material today, that we can travel by all over the world. He's saying that is nothing still. 
Because that still cannot even encompass the instruments that we make to travel by and even go as far as the moon and even make instruments to go far as Mars. Still, it cannot encompass or even still can ambulate the entire universe that is in the Samawat, in the earthly skies. We cannot even go beyond that by sight nor by travel. So great is Allah's universe and even this earthly sky. It is so what? So great. And our efforts and our technology is still yet scratching the surface. We have not reached so far. And at that time, Allah is saying, Glory be to Allah. What Allah is telling us here is that what is greater than anything else is that Allah's might in doing whatever He will is not by any chance but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the will of Allah? This is what is important here. You see the narration here is not to find out reality or non-reality. It's to understand what Allah wants us to know. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed the ayat of Quran, Surah Bani Israel. This is the very first verse. The surah takes its name from Banu Israel. And he puts this as the first verse. Connection to this verse, coming afterwards, is the incidence of Banu Israel. And the way and their lifestyle, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in, made incumbent upon them to follow and live by, or mentioned in the verses that come afterwards. In the same surah. And it tells of their disobedience in the same surah. Why will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put precedent with this verse and then give other ayats of the Quran in that same chapter, Surah Banu Israel, talking about Banu Israel and their failure to uphold the covenants of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give to us the understanding clearly from here that this, what Allah is telling us is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took whom he wants now to be transferred in the position of Nabuwat and leadership over man to take place. Because no longer Banu Israel is capable. In other words, if someone is no longer fit for a job and you realize, you know, I have to, this person cannot fit the job, then you look for someone else who will take that mantle and that responsibility. And who did he find? He appointed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Ummah, his nation, to take this responsibility. So he says, Watch, O Messenger of Allah, look at the condition of the people of the past. Look at the condition of the people who were made leaders before you. Look at what they were, what they used to do, what their behaviors were like, and where they are. And today, your position will be leadership over them and over your people. Today, leadership will be for you, for them, and for your people. And I'm going to take you there. You're going to see the things where he says, لِنُورِيَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, لِنُورِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ آيَاتِنَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show him our signs. Allah says, what are the signs? The signs that current encompasses this earth from Makkah, all the way to Aqsa and surroundings. Why show him that? Linuriyahu. Why show him that? The connection for that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show him where this Islam would reach. He showed him the banks of the Euphrates, the river of Euphrates and the valleys and the people that inhabited around the rivers and of the Nile. Showing all of this, saying that these places will come under the banner of this deen. But what was the life of the Prophet ﷺ? Showing him this, Linuriyahu, showing him what all of this is going to come here, and we are just a group of people who have to go secretly night in one house to do the dawah and the learning of deen. And if they catch us, if they catch us, they are going to do what? They are going to what? Abuse us. Beat us. They are going to prosecute us. They are going to give us so much hardship we are having. They put us in a boycott for three years. No food, nothing. And you are showing me, oh Allah, that all of this is going to come into Islam. This is what? Strange enough, 
Allah is showing to him what the effort is all about. It is not by might, it is not by a mighty army, it is not by any other means, it is by simple actions, simple deed, a little, little deed. And what was that deed? Being in a little environment, teaching and changing and changing an individual, individual by individual. Bringing them to the deen of Allah, inviting them, helping them, giving them the encouragement of how to change their lives. And changing their lives, changing the environment. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that is, Islam is not about anything other than about whom? People. Changing the way we live our lives to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the direction of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, لِنُورِيَهُ ayatina, Showing them what is going to happen that all of these people, all of these places is going to come into Islam. And it will be the fortress of Islam. It will be where Islam will reside and continue and will not change. And until today, it remains the same. Until today, it remains the same. It has not changed. These are the places where the Roman Empire and the Trinity, the people used to worship that Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we know that term, referring to whom? Isa, and whom they associate? Allah, and they associate Jibra'il with. Bringing them together in the Trinity. So, he says, these people will be what? Turn into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people who used to worship the fire, the Zoroastrians, they will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah changed their lives around. Allah changed the condition of these people and give them iman. Allah is showing him from just this one journey. And what did he use? What was the metal mention of the instrument used for the travel? He said it was the Borak. But a Borak, it says by its journey, the distance it would see is the distance it will move by. Subhanallah. The distance that it would see and encompass with one's distance as eye, that's the distance it will cover in that flash. We can see very far, but we cannot even cover that distance, so we can even walk as fast or run as fast. We can't even, even compare with speed. And even instruments that we create can even compare to the speed of that. And this is just one creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he used for this journey. And one of the important incidents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about is that this journey, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had a very important operation. And that operation took a place within his heart, his skull. That every different types of things that we use to travel on, we have sometimes, we have motion sickness if we travel on the ocean, so we take some tablets for it, to feel what better we get, otherwise we feel upset. So we sometimes people travel on different things and they become what, sick by it, so they use different medicines for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that no human possible being could have undertook this journey except that they were equipped for it. And one of the ways to be equipped for it is to purify and intensify the heart. What is the condition of the heart? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Humaza. Understand about the heart because there are many ayats of the Quran that speaks about the heart. And why it is that the heart must also be fortified. In Surah Humaza, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a group of people. وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ humaza. Some people who will do what? Backbite. And they will make jokes about people. You know, we just watch someone and we just speak about that person and laugh at them and make jokes on them and make other people laugh at them. These people, Lumaza, they involve themselves in such actions that they used to do these actions at that time. Because this incident is very important and connects to this seerah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understand the connection, how this ayat about Lumaza 
and making joke about an incident took place. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam undertook the miraj, and he went up to the heavens, and he came before the doors of Jannah, and he met with the angel that was in charge of the door. Under that angel, there were 12,000 angels guarding with him. And under these 12,000 angels, there were 12,000 angels under each of them. Just doing the guarding and protection of the Jannah, the door and entry into Jannah. It is the entry in which the souls at the time of death uses to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the pathway that each and every soul has had that leaves this world. That leaves this world has to stand before Allah through this entry and then it will know its destiny. Whether it's going in Illiyin or it's going in Sijin. Whether the soul is going to enjoy the best in Barzakh or it's going to go in Sijin and enjoy the punishments or either it's going to enjoy tranquility and happiness. Which one of the enjoyments? So in this Path, pathway towards Jannah the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa saying this is the pathway that the souls will also travel this is the pathway that the Ambiyas would use it's nothing new it is nothing strange it is what is normal in that life of those people whom Allah has chosen subhanallah when he speaks of Jannah he goes and he meets with the Ambiyas the prophets of Allah. In the various places of Jannah and the stages of Jannah, he reaches the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he speaks before Allah in front of Sidratul Muntaha, this tree, subhanallah, what a tree, that the flaw of the tree, what we would have grass and shrubs below our tree, its flaw is made of gold. Its flaw is made of gold and the angels are on this tree and this tree only radiates with it light the leaves are the size of this tree as the ears of an elephant the fruits of this tree subhanallah what scent what smell and what color so beautiful Amongst the Sidra, amongst the trees, this is one of the beautiful trees of Jannah. And the size of this tree, if we would think of the size of the angel Jibra'il, then think about the size of the tree. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa had two encounters in seeing Jibra'il alayhi salam in his original form. One of the times, is after the first revelation, Ikra bismi rabbi kalladi khalaf. When he was speeding back to his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala and he looked towards the horizon and he looks at the wings and he sees it cover the entire horizon. As far as the eyes could see, he was only seeing the wings. And the next occasion, when he was at Jannah in paradise, in this heaven, 600 wings and just two of it just open and cover everything. And what is the size and the encompassing of the Jannah in comparison to this world? We know how Trinidad is in comparison to any big country. People have called us just out, a dot. Just a dot. All of this world and all of the Samawat, all of the things that we talk about, Mars and all the different galaxies and things that we don't even know about, put together, all of the heavens put together, all of the Samawats put together, is just like one dot. Then start to talk about Jannah. Then start to talk about what Jannah looks like. And the size of this tree. And who is the angel Jibra'il in science and in comparison to all of that? All of that is still small. This is who angel Jibra'il is. And when we think to ourselves that we are what? Really big and great and mighty people. We are powerful. We are strong and we can do this and do that. And we are not even as much as a dot. 
as much as of that, we are not even so. We are just a creation, a makhluk of Allah, who Allah loves. Who Allah loves and desires to enjoy the beautiful places that He has created us in Jannah. Such a beautiful tree that will be before, be before those who will have the, the blessings and the mercy of Allah if they are per permitted by Allah to even reach at that point. Subhanallah. And what about this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amongst the Ambiyas, Amongst them, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam gets the opportunity to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gets the opportunity to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hearing the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just saying, but hearing the voice of Allah. And this is one of the greatest gifts that was given to the Rasul. It is a source of what? Consolation in the Mi'raj. One was the Isra and one was the Mi'raj. Let's understand what is the aswat and the voice of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and what is the voice of Allah subhanahu wa taala and their conversation at tahiyatulillahi wa salawat. This is what we read in salah every day. This was their conversation. This was their conversation at tahiyatulillahi wa salawat. This was their conversation in where we read in our salah. This was the conversation between Allah and Sayyidul Muntaha. At that point, Allah conversed with him, and he conversed. Allah conversed with him. And we recite that conversation in our salah every day. Subhanallah. What a conversation. What a conversation that Allah gives to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he gives to him the salams and the salutations and elevated him. And gives to us the testimony, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That every time we would perform our salah, we testify that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one true Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he indeed is the messenger. That when we would pray our salah, what do we achieve? What do we achieve in this conversation? Is that we achieve this ta'kid and emphasis in our hearts. That indeed Allah, Allah is indeed this Rabb that created all of this. And this Allah is the one who has prepared this Jannah and is calling us. And we are saying this in our Salah. We are conversing this conversation. And yet sometimes our minds is not in Salah. Our mind is not in Salah. And we are conversing this Dua. We are making this Dua. And we are testifying about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And yet... The love of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and the akhlaq of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and the words of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has not imprinted in our hearts as yet. It does not reach our hearts as yet. What is that condition? What is that condition? And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was then not just given salah because salah was already there. What was important is that it became obligatory in this order. And what was the order? 50 rakat of salah. 50 salah. 50 salah was given until it was created up to the point of negotiation with Musa alayhi salam going and telling him go back to Allah until he reached 5. And then what has happened in the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he says that subhanallah that every good deed is multiplied 10 times. Every good deed is multiplied 10 times. So the 5 times daily salah that we perform we receive as though we perform 50 times salah. And every other good deed that we do, it is multiplied ten times. This is the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the gift that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received. That even our amal, our deeds are enumerated. It is multiplied. Every good deed that we do is multiplied. And we live a life of what? Average 60, 70 years. Just multiplied by ten. If it is involved in good deeds... And just multiply it by 10. And that is not all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this ummah in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning the Quran, what? Laylatul Qadr, even greater rewards. You just imagine 80 years, 83 years of ibarat, and you multiply it by 10. Who could get better than that? Which nation could have been blessed with this? This is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the gifts of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we look at this mi'raj and this ascension, and the reward that comes with it, it was not just about salah, it was about understanding Allah. It is about understanding Allah and the duty of it. Because someone could speak about this topic, it is there in the Quran. Allah made it mentioned in the Quran for a reason. 
It was not just talking about what? Salah. It talked about the journey. It talked about why. He says, Li nuri yahu. To show signs. He didn't say about Salah. He says, Li nuri yahu. To show signs. To show him the signs. What is the sign? What is important about signs? What is important about signs? Signs are so important. If we are on a journey and we are going in a road or a strange area, what do we look for? Give me an address. Because without that, we are lost. We look for the signs. We want to know where to go. Which street to take. What is the house number? Why? Because we want to reach at that house. Not any house. That house and that place. If we want to reach Allah, we must know the address. If we want to reach Allah, we must know the address. Because if we take any other address, we will not reach there. We will not reach there. And we must know what is that address. And Allah says, Li nuriyahu ayatina. To show him our signs. To show him it here, and not only here, in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him about paradise. And what took place in paradise? He says, to show him the signs in paradise as well. What was those signs in paradise? All of the things mentioned there. He says, amongst them was about the angels. Amongst them was about the things in Jannah. About the things in hell. What he looked at. What he see there. What to do to be protecting ourselves on the fire of Jahannam. What to do to make entry into Jannah and to make our position in Jannah the best? What do we want? Do we just want... Some people ask, you know what we say sometimes? If I could scrape through, I'm okay. <laughs> Ajib. <laughs> you know, a strange thing. He says, if I could just scrape through, I'm doing like good. At least I'm in paradise. At least I'm in paradise. If we live life like that, if we really live our earthly life like that, we don't do that. We don't do that. If I have a little house, it's okay. Do we say that? If I have a little room, a little shack, I okay. If I have a little old car, it's all right. If I have a little job, just a well menial job, I okay in life. Do we do that? We don't do that. We don't do that for a life that is what? Temporary. Something that we are going to leave behind. We look for what? The best. We want the best. The best that we could get. The best job, the best car, the best house. The best place, the best of everything. And those are things that are only temporary. What about the best in Jannah? Not a scrape through. Not a scrape through. What we want is the best. But how do we attain it? Really and truly, how do we attain the best in Jannah? Just talking it? Is it just about a speech? It is about living it. Because we don't just talk the best in this world. We know what we do to get it. We know what we do to attain the best. It means we work hard and hard and more hard until we achieve what we want. And then we know we have it. And we feel proud when we have it. But what about the life of the hereafter? If we have not picked up on these signs, if we did not learn the address, if we did not know what path to take, to reach there, what is going to be our position? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, look for the signs. Because he showed it to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He showed him these signs. Because these signs are so important in our life. And we neglect it very much every day. So much. So much. We pay no heed to it. We think that life is just what it is and paradise is an opportunity that is waiting but waiting how waiting how how are we going to attain paradise and this is what Allah SWT wants us to get at because Allah SWT mentions in the same chapter Bani Israel talking about Bani Israel talking about them he says in reference to them one of the things he says in al-basara in the sama wal basara wal fuada kullu all of them kullun they are answer of mas'ulan they are answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the eyes the ears and the heart 
is answerable to Allah. Telling us, telling us what? You have eyes, look. Look and see. You have ears, hear. You have a heart. Be conscious of what goes in there. Because our eyes see and it registers something in our heart. We hear it registers something in our heart. If someone says and is right there and telling us things bad about us, how do we feel? We smile? No, we become angry. Because we don't want to hear things that are bad about us. When we see things that are wrong, what does it do? It affects our heart. Allah said these three qualities are answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Referring to Banu Israel, what were their lifestyle? And it affects us because this is concerned in the same chapter, Surah Banu Israel. Because Allah wants to say, لِنُورِيَ آيَاتِنَا To show the signs of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What we ought not to be like, and what we would be like when Allah has given to the Messenger of Allah full dominion and rulership over this world. That this Islam was meant that everyone should have guidance. Hudallin nas, guidance for all of mankind. Not for other people, for ourselves to fall by the way, but to lead. To lead people. These are signs for us to lead. We are not followers, we are leaders. Allah created this ummah, put its leader in a position to make us leaders. But how do we become leaders if we ourselves can redesign? You are carrying your whole family in a car and you are going down in the path where? In a ditch and you don't even know where you're going. What a sad state. We are going somewhere, I'm taking you somewhere, but we don't know where we are going, we are lost. And that is what is happening. Leading your whole family and we don't know where we are going. So Allah is saying that Bani Israel, their life, this that they used to see, but they never registered it in their heart. They hear the words of Allah, but it never registered in their heart. And they always turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. And when they would see evil, and they would love evil, they would hear evil and they would love, to, love it. This was their style. Today we see haram. We look at haram. What, what does we do? What are our, what are our attitude towards it? We hear things, haram sounds, haram songs. But what do we do? Does it affect us? We hear brothers slandering and backbiting one another. And this is the point. Because this is what they used to do. And at the time, when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back with the message, and he goes to the house of Muhani where he left from, and he says to her, I went on this journey. She says, don't tell anyone this. They will make this a fun, a joke. What they will do? They will take what you are saying and make it a joke. So Abu Jahal, goes to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says to him, what do you have new to say to me? And he says to him, I went on this journey in the night. He says, would you tell everybody here in Makkah the same thing that you tell me? Would you tell everybody in Makkah what you are telling me? He says, of course. So he called everyone, gather them. And then what he did? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said exactly what happened. And what was the reaction of the people? That is important because this was the journey, but that wasn't so important as what is this? Because this is what happens to us as well. This is how when the, the Islam and the deen reaches us, what happens to us? This is how we behave at times. What Abu Jahl did? The people were there, they heard the message. What the message was from the messenger of Allah, the prophet of Allah. What some of them did. When they heard this message, some of them apostated the religion. They left because they feel that this could never be true. Some of us, if something happened to Islam, and Islam is under pressure, throw the topi. Disguise, disappear. 
go into the hearts of the people and like you are not, they don't know who you are. Muslim who? Where? Disappear. You know if you are Muslim again. That is one condition. So they will feel that they are no longer worthy of this man to be their prophet. Next group started to laugh because Abu Jahl started to make it what? A joke. That he had to be out of this world to even say such a thing. So the other people started to make him a laughing stock. And there are people like that. The unbelievers, this is what they would do. They would look at this Islam and they will belittle it to the lowest. And this was their condition in that group of people. That they will do everything possible to bring it down. And they would laugh at the Rasul. They would laugh at him and make it as though it is nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Lumaza, وَيْلُلِّ كُلِّ هُمَزَةِ الْلُّمَزَةِ that woe unto that one who would slander, say things that are fall, and make jokes, and make people laugh at him. Alladhi, the one who thinks that he is safe by his wealth. He thinks by his wealth and the honor that he has, by the authority that he has, he feels that he's around and he has strength and power, and he feels that could save him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that could never do anything. That could never do anything. In Surah Al-Humazah, Allah gives the response to it. He says, all of that jokes that one would make on someone, make them feel bad. That is only one of the worst of all sins you are doing for yourself. It is the thing that is going to destroy you. He says, out of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts him into the hell fire. And for those who are Humazah and Lumazah, who would backbite and slander and make jokes about people, one of the worst of sins, he says, when Allah would put them into the hell fire, He will put them into these cubicles, or what we will call ovens, and their skins, which will be so thick, will roast away, roast away. Such is the condition of the fire of hell. What is the condition of the fire of hell? For the first stage, 1,000 years, it burned while it was red. And then it burned for one next 1,000 years, and then it turned white. And then it burned for the next thousand years and then turned black. And he placed him in this hell. Placed him in this hell. And it will burn and burn until it starts to burn the heart. Until it starts to burn the heart. But the heart, today if we get a little stick in the heart, we could die. If we get a little what? Clog in the heart. Heart attack, you could die. But this heart will burn and that person will not die. This heart will burn and the person will not die. That is the punishment for Humaza or Lumaza. Abu Jahl being one of those who categorize himself for being this position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not take it lightly. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give glory and testification to this in the Quran. That this was one of the greatest gifts that Allah has given to His Prophet. And what are we going to do? Laugh about it. Not ponder about it. Not think of what we are doing in our life as Muslims. What are we doing? We hear these ayahs of Quran over and over. We would read the surah. We would understand the surah really not and live by it. Or do we just sit back and understand, well, this was just a journey. What they did, some of them just what? Turned away from the deen because of this. Because they did not believe in it. They couldn't accept this because they did not have yaqeen and reality that this is possible. That this is possible. And yet a set of them started to what? Laugh. And what did Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu did? Ta'ala anhu did? What did he do? When they came to him and they narrated the incident that the people are saying this and saying that, he says, did he, the messenger of Allah, say this? Did he say this? He said, well, if he said this, then this is true. Subhanallah. He didn't hear to his own ears, his own air. They came to him and said that he said this. And he said, if he said this, then this is true. He needs no more proof. He needs no more proof. That is tasdeeq bil qalb. He's Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. 
one of the greatest companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That perfection made him among the noblest of companions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated the position of Abu Bakr amongst all of the companions. Even Umar radiallahu ta'ala who says, he says that not even I could be close to Abu Bakr. Why? Because he had firm conviction in his heart that what this messenger brought and the life and the message that he brings, he lived by it, he conformed upon it, and he did everything possible to maintain the perfection of these teachings. What do we do to maintain the perfection of this Islam? What do we do? The eyes of the Quran is there. This deen is before us. Islam is with us. The Quran is there. The sunnah of the Rasul is here with us. What do we do? Do we read the Quran? Do we read the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do we perfect our life? Do we spend our wealth? Do what do we do with our lives and this or Islam? Are we, what, are we not to follow in the footsteps of Abu Bakr? And what he did, and the Sahabas radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they were our predecessors. They were the ones whom Allah loved. Because their actions were loved by Allah, because what they did was to uphold the honor and the dignity of Islam, and what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bring and perfected. What do we do? Just sit back? We cannot. We cannot sit back with this deen, and hope, and think, well, somebody else is doing something. I don't need to do anything. So I think everything is going good. I come to mosque. I go home. How the mosque runs is not my problem. I do any other thing. It happens. It goes on. But this is not what happens. This is not what we should think. Because every one of us, in every community, there are people who cannot read Quran. And what do we do? They can't read Quran. That is their problem. No. It is all our problem. Because this is the words of Allah. These are the ayats. لِنُورِيَ آيَاتِنَا We must know this. We must know the signs. Are we going to follow blindly? Allah said this is about the signs. It is about the signs. It is the gift of salah, yeah? But it's about the signs. One of them was salah. Oh, making it obligatory. And what about Salah and coming back to the signs? What about Salah before I forget about it? Is that Salah was meant to do what? Change our life. If Salah is not changing our life, and many people think about this, they pray Salah. But their deeds are not changing. Their deeds are not changing. They continue along the same path. Something is wrong with that Ibarat. Because Salah is and supposed to change our life. With yaqeen and trust that this ibadat is perfected in our life, Salah has to make a change in our life. It must do something for us. So therefore we have to upgrade that Salah. We have to upgrade our ibadat. Something is lacking. What is lacking? Ask ourselves, what are we leaving out of our ibadat? Is it something that is external, that is needed for Salah? Is it something in the Salat? Is it something within there that is not causing perfection of that Salat in my heart? What is this? Because the external conditions, arkans, laws before salah, and laws within salah. These are things that we have to learn and put into our lives. We just cannot sit down, even the mashayi, the scholars, and the, the people of deen, the knowledgeable people of deen, they are also recommending for themselves that they must always review the order of salah, the laws of salah. Because even though you are alim, you still need to learn and review these laws because our salah needs to be perfected. It is not just for the individual alone. Or person will say it's just as the arm and normal people. No. Even the imam, the leaders, they have to review their salah. They have to review salah because it is important for their salah to be in order. Without this, what is going to be our condition? Without our salah being perfected, what will be the condition of our amals and the rest of our life? And then what is the signs? Amongst them, Quran. Could we read Quran? We read the Quran? If not, then something is wrong. Do we read what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has told us about the mi'raj, the ascension, and other aspects of the deen? We look in the Sahih Bukhari, we look in Sahih Muslim, we look in Ibn Majah, Tirmizi, Abu Dawud, look into the books of Hadith, look at the Bidayat and Nihaya, the books of history, and see what do you see about the real aspect of the life of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his illustrious companions. Look into these books, 
and find out all of the great things about this deen. Do not follow blindly. Become part of the signs that Allah has given to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Become on the path that we know where we are going. Become such people who would understand that we are on a course. That we have a purpose in living. That we are coming to the house of Allah and we have a function to fulfill. We are not here just to make numbers. We are not here just to fully soft. We are here because we make a difference in our community. We make a difference in the people in our community. We change the lives of people by the help of Allah. We bring people to the order of Allah, the mercy of Allah. We help people, we support people because our deen teaches us to uplift our lives and our family lives. We are not just Muslim by guess. It is by the favor of Allah. This guidance is not just by guess. It is by the favor of Allah. This iman that we have, it's not by guess. Allah has given us that. If He takes this away, what is going to be our condition? What will be our condition if Allah takes our Iman? And what is the condition of Iman? Iman is such that a person, as the Rasul says, Al Jannatu Akrabi min Sharaqi Na'lihi. Paradise is closer to you than the lace in your shoes, but Jahannamu Mithla Dalik. And the hellfire is similar to that. What is the difference? No difference. We could think we are on the pathway, thinking we are on the pathway to Jannah. But really and truly, one action throws us into the fire of hell. This is how narrow it is in the choices that we make in life. It is not that we have opportunities now. I'll wait till I get older. I will wait until we get older, something ma'ath Allah happen to us. We cannot do what we could have done when we were young. We do not take advantage of our free time and our health. We do not take advantage of the thing and our wealth. Sometimes we think that we have wealth and we are massing our wealth. And then after something happens and all of it gone. All of it gone. And when we could have spent some of that in the path of Allah, we lose the opportunity. And it is no longer with us. When we could have come to the masjid and learned something, something happens to us, Allah may Allah save us from such things, we no longer have the health and the strength and we cannot learn anything anymore. When we could have stand in salah for a longer period of time in ibadat and worship, now we are so weak, we, our knees are buckling, it is shaking and we can't even stand in salah. We become weak. Waiting for what? There is no waiting. There is no other opportunity. There is no other time. But the time to serve Allah and to understand the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is before us. Let it not go by. Let a day not pass that we have not learned from this Isra and this Mi'raj. Because it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. We have probably have heard many other types of the narrative aspect of the Mi'raj from step to step and what happened in each place. But what, let us understand. It is much more than just that. It is what we bring from it into our lives. It is what was given to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he was in a state of being in the lowest of the low. When his wife passed away. When his uncle passed away. When he was defeated in Taif. And he came back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him on this journey. And gave to him the assurance, the motivation by these signs. Sometimes we feel that we are not motivated. We don't have the zeal, the zest, and the effort, and the energy to do things for deen. If we want those motivation and that, go to the Quran, go to the Sunnah, sit in the environment of ilm and learning deen, sit in the environment where we can be with each other, because that is where the motivation is going to come from. Nowhere else. We cannot be in any other place except in such an environment for our condition to change. If we don't find ourselves in it, we are going to lose. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you and me and keep us all on the straight path. Wa aqdana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumu khayr. Shatiin fi yadayhi Kaffaratun lil khataya Wa shatiin fi yadayhi Kaffaratun خطايا ذهبت يوما إليه بأدمعي وشقايا ورحت ألقي عليه تبتلي وهداي